Hi, what have we got here? As if the title of the video doesn't give it away somewhat. I don't know why I get so excited about new bits coming into the studio. No matter how many new bits of kit you get, uh, you know, something, even something like this, which is, you know, a relatively cheap bit of kit. Um, really, really can't wait to have a look at this. So let's get into the box. And we even get a UK adapter from Toman at once. Hooray! Things are looking up. So here we've got the TD3 SR, the silver one. Nice little happy acid sticker. And what feels like a really lightweight little synth. Yeah, so the first thing I notice about this is quite how, how lightweight it is because the other bits and bobs have got like the Behringer Crave feel sort of chunky and substantial and you know hefty feels like a sort of like almost like just a lump of metal but this is definitely taken after its inspiration in its sort of plasticky construction that in no way is a complaint it is what it is it's uh, based on a 303 which is a little plasticky box and, and so is this just a little surprise because the pro one the k20 as i say the crave are all sort of little chunky little things uh, and this is definitely not so it sort of does take you back to the 80s from that perspective. So we've got power, power switch, USB, I think that's just for MIDI, out, through, and an in on a five pinned in, and the main output, which is a proper sized jack. Of course, got a filter in, sync in, CV out, gate out, and a phone's out as well. So let's plug it in. And I should also say that this isn't going to be a walkthrough. I've opened the box. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. Um, it looks like it's going to be the same as a, as a standard 303, but I just don't know yet. So uh, I'll do another walkthrough video of this. But this is just me getting out of the box, having a little play. So, yeah, as I say, we've got a nice sort of standard size cable in the back. And the power cable is quite chunky as well. Actually, it's not as, not as delicate as most. Let's turn it on. I don't know if you can see that, but there's uh, lights flashing and stuff. This, we're on. <laughs> there are red lights flashing. Let's just let's just start it and see what happens. Maybe turn the volume up. Well, we have acid. Just going to turn the gain up a little on my interface. <laughs> a bit too much there. Let's try it again. And I can't help myself. I can see there's a big switch there saying distortion. So uh, let's just play with that. So that to me sounds like, or seems to be, the same distortion that they've put into the Poly D. You've got the distortion, you've got the tone, high or low, and you've got a level. And once you bring the distortion circuit in, the level controls the level, uh, the output level for the whole thing. But that's a nice touch having distortion built in. Because let's face it, you're probably going to put it through distortion no matter what you do. Okay, let's just start playing with that cutoff, shall we? And the resonance. To be honest, I was hoping for a bit more of a screech from the resonance there.
maybe I'm just so used to sort of doing acidy things on stuff that can self-resonate, which this can't. I'm expecting it to do things that, that the standard 303 doesn't. I've played with a, th a real 303 so many years ago and no one liked using them because they didn't have MIDI and you had to sync it up with your 909 and it was an absolute pain in the backside. So as soon as Novation <laughs> brought out the base station, <laughs> you never saw another 303 in the studio really. <laughs> That's all sawtooth, let's try it on the square. So yeah, it's, it's actually quite a weird experience because I do feel like I'm playing on an old 303. As I say, it's a while since I've, since I've played with one. And I'd love, obviously, I'd love to get one and put it side by side, but... But as far as being a little 303 box, this is this is well doing the trick, isn't it? And I have to say, it's nice of them to have actually pre-populated some of these rhythms. Maybe they've pre-populated them all, I don't know. But the RD8 came with nothing, and it took me ages to get any old sound out of it. That's getting there, isn't it? As I said, <laughs> you're going to be wanting to use that distortion, aren't you? Let's try that without. Oh, get in. <laughs> that's, that's ace. say it's nice that it's pre-populated we've got the four um, pattern groups one two three and four and you've got the seven tracks that you can program as well so let's just play pattern one pattern group one pattern one <laughs> So in pattern group one, you've got 16 patterns. You've got eight, an A or B for each, that's 16. Pattern group two, which is where it's then clicked on either three or four. Select three or four, you're still on pattern group two. It doesn't make any difference. Five and six is pattern group three, and seven is pattern group four. It's labeled, so it's not that difficult. <laughs> it sounds a bit crackers, but once you once you look at it and play with it, it's really simple. So we're going to pattern group four and play the final one. But really nice that it's well populated with um with some acid tracks actually. RD8 when I got that, I couldn't I couldn't get a sound of it. I don't know if you've seen the, the unboxing video, that took me ages, didn't know what was going on. Um I thought it was broken, but it's just because there was nothing programmed to start with. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo,
just makes you want to play with it, doesn't it? I love it. It's just asking to be tweaked, isn't it? It's great fun. Okay, let's have a let's have a go. Programming something, shall we? Pattern one, um, pattern group one, pattern one. Play that. It's quite nice, but let's clear it. So we go into right mode. That one and that one, make sure they're on. And I think we press pattern one and clear. Play. There you go, that's gone. Scary. So to set the number of steps, you press function and step uh, 16 times if you want 16 um, steps. We, I do want 16 steps, I'm not gonna touch it. It'd be nice if there was a little LED to actually tell you how many steps you've got. Um, Cause yeah, it isn't the 80s, but you know, hey ho. So let's put it into pitch mode. And let's do uh, Josh Wink's higher state of consciousness because he uses two notes all the way through. It's G and then it's a low G and then it's four more G's. B, G, B, G. Then G, B, G, 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 B. <laughs> oh, oh, it makes me laugh that one every time. All right, well, that's not recorded anything. <laughs> After all notes have been entered, you need to enter the timing of each note in time mode. Note while in time mode, no sounds will be heard. So all the notes are entered. Let's go into time mode. So we're in time mode. You need to tell it if it's a note, a tie, or a rest. They're all going to be notes. So that's note, that's tie, and that's rest. So let's just press step 16 times. And we've come out of time mode. See what's happening. So yeah, so there's the 16 steps. Now we need to add the slides. Um, I do have a sheet next to me. I'm not remembering this off the top of my head. Let's go back into pitch mode. Then we can play all the notes just by using the right next step. There we go. So what we want to do is press the right stroke next button. And when we get to a note we want to add a tie to, we keep holding that down and press tie or slide, sorry. So we want one on the first, the third and the fourth. So, oh, pitch mode. Okay, so right. That's now got a slide on it. Don't want one on that one, but we want one on number three and four. So three's got one, four's now got one. We don't want one on five, six, seven, eight, or nine, but we want one on note 10. Don't want one on 11 or 12, but we want one on 13 and 14, so. And nothing on 15 or 16. If you make a mistake, you can always press back, but you don't really know where you are, which is annoying. It would be nice to have a little LED. So let's go back into normal mode and have a listen. Excellent. You, but I find that very satisfying. Oh my god, 120 pounds or whatever it was. That's, that's fantastic, isn't it? I was thinking I'll stick it through my um, culture vulture or something, get some really dirty sort of distortion tones out of it, but this little circuit here is really, really nice.
I mean, I'm going a bit over the top there, but that's not, that's what the four, isn't it? So yeah, first impressions. Properly good, fun little 303 clone. Really nice. Um, I'll probably do another video actually going through the sequencer in a bit more detail. I'm maybe trying to play it along with some other bits and bobs, but um, yeah, um, <laughs> that's that's going nowhere fast. That's a proper little, it's a proper little, proper little full machine, as you know, as was the 303. We're just getting out of the box, having a little play with it. I can't believe how, how much fun it is, really, for £120. And the addition of an on-built distortion generator is uh, is fantastic. Yeah, because you're going to use it all the time, aren't you? Let's face it. So if you like that, don't forget to press the subscribe button. And also, maybe head over to my Patreon page. Help support the channel. Helps you bring in new, new bits of kit, you know. You buy them, you sell them, you lose a bit of money every time. So it gets pretty expensive doing these. But I know, I know people enjoy them, and, and I enjoy making them as well, so... If you want to get involved via Patreon, that'd be that'd be really appreciated as well. But hopefully that was of some use to somebody somewhere. See you next time.